Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another Game Maker video, or tutorial rather, by Rex Furry. Let's start by getting this out of the way. Alright, so yeah, I'm finally back with another tutorial, and um, today in this tutorial, I'm going to be doing something that I've been wanting to do for quite a while, and, um, you know, I decided, you know, let's go ahead and get this over with. Alright, so what I'm going to be showing you guys today is how to create a door, or a barrier, as uh, shown here, and a switch, as shown right here. And when the player collides with this switch, um, the door will kind of move up. And uh, if you get off that switch, then it will fall back down and, you know, all that cool stuff. And, uh, yeah, so there's a lot that you can do with this. And I find it very useful in a whole bunch of things. And, uh, yeah, so without uh, further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Now, to save time, I've already created the objects and sprites, but I will go through them, um, through, like, through this whole tutorial and uh, what they all do and pretty much, you know, stuff like that. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with these sprites here. Um, these are just standard sprites. Um, I named this one SBR Block. Yours can be SBR Ground, Ground, whatever you want to name it or have it named. And uh, let's go ahead and sprite here. All right, and for this, I just created a uh, new 32 by 32 sprite. And uh, double click this here. Use the square tool to create a simple square. All right, and that is that. And the door is just a 32 by 64 um, the sprite. And all I did was, you know, just paint it black. So that's that. And the button, I named it SBR button. And um, all you have to do is just, I mean, you can just pretty much do anything. Like, you could probably just use a regular square here if you wanted to. But I decided to give it a little more uh, pizzazz or whatever. And so that's why I put the little red thing on there, signaling a button. And my player is just a really simple uh, cube guy um, with a green outline, green outline for the eye as well, uh, just to make him stand out, you know, to let, uh, let you guys know that he is the player, you know, easier to, uh, easier to see. All right, and uh, those are the sprites there. As you can see, nothing special. Let's go ahead and go to the objects. All right, so for the object block, all you do is name it, you know, whatever you name the sprite for it. Uh, choose the right sprite, so I choose my SBR underscore block. All right, from here, and you have to have visible and solid checked. All right, and that's all you need to do for your all, um uh <coughs> ah excuse me, oh man, there's something in my throat. Okay, but anyway, um, that's all you have to do for your block slash ground object. All right, and then for the door, I went to go went uh, excuse me went ahead and created another object for it, and uh, named it obj underscore door, and you have to have again visible and solid checked. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll go over these two in uh, just a second, or these things. All right, and then I went ahead and created an OBJ, or excuse me, object for my button and named it OBJ underscore button. All right, and I chose my button sprite, and you do not want solid checked for this object. All right, but you do want visible checked. And we will go over this, as I said, in uh, just a little bit. And for my OBJ player... Um, I named OBJ underscore player. You can have whatever you want. Uh, just player, you know, um, character. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. All right. So um, then I went to go, uh, excuse me, went ahead and chose my player sprite. And all you need here is visible checked. All right. And with that, let's go ahead and start off on our player because I think it's a good place to start off on. All right. So the first thing I did was I created some gravity for my player. And so I went to add event and step and choose the regular step. And this is just some very simple gravity. Any gravity will work. And uh, yeah, so if you already have gravity, you don't need to worry about this. But I'm just going to go here. Uh, excuse, <coughs> ah, excuse me. Oh, man, my throat's just really acting up. Anyway, um, I went ahead and just created some simple gravity, as I just said. And I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys what I did for this gravity. So I went to the control tab, clicked and dragged it over a check empty. And for X, I put 0, Y, I put 1, objects, I chose only solid, which I believe is the default. And uh, applies to, just keep itself, and relative is checked. All right, and hit OK. And then I went ahead and went to the move tab and clicked and dragged over the set gravity. All right, and uh, on this set gravity action, I went ahead and um, just for direction, I put 270, which is the down direction. And gravity, I put 0.5. All right, and again, applies to is uh, just keep itself, and relative is not checked. All right, and then you can hit OK, and then go to Control and click and drag over the else action. 
All right, and obviously it has no options within itself, so you can't really do anything in there. All right, so then you want to go to the Move tab again, click and drag over another set gravity, and all you want to do is for direction, just type out 270, and gravity, just leave it zero, and relative is not checked, and applies to is obviously self. <laughs> all right, and hit OK. And then the next thing that you want to do is you want to go Add Event, and uh, again, if you already have this gravity, um, you do not need to put uh, like all this gravity and stuff. It doesn't matter uh, what gravity you have. Any gravity will work fine. All right, so the next thing I did was um, go collision with my block. All right, and if you already have a collision, like with your block or whatever, like um, pretty like any um, basically stopping motion, like when you hit your block, you like don't fall through it or anything. If you already have something like that, then you do not need to do this. But uh, I just did this um, a really quick way. So yeah. Anyway, um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what I put in here. So I, oh sorry, my phone is ringing. Hang on. All right, well, I'm back. Uh, my phone just rang, and no one left a message, which strikes me kind of odd because it was somebody that, I mean, I would have thought would have left a message, but whatever. Uh, continuing on with this tutorial, let's go ahead and go inside of these two actions and see what they're made of. All right, so um, I went to the Move tab, and I clicked and dragged over a uh, that set direction action. There it is. Or Move to Contact, sorry. And uh, to click to open this here. And uh, the applies to, obviously, I kept itself. Direction, you want to type out the word direction, D-I-R-E-C-T-I-O-N, as it says right over here. Maximum, uh, just type out the uh, 12, the word, or not the word, the uh, the number. Wow, that was weird. Anyway, um, and then against, you just want to have solid objects, which, again, I believe is the default for this action. All right, you want to go ahead and click OK. And the next thing you want to do is click and drag over the set vertical. It is in the Move tab, just like the first action. And you just want to keep everything the same. Just keep er all the default options um, just how they are and hit OK. All right. So, and again, if you already have kind of a collision with all your all, like grounds and everything, uh, you don't need to do this. All right. And the next thing I did was um, add event and collision with my door. And uh, actually, I didn't really do that. I just went uh, right-clicked on here and hit Duplicate Event. So it's the exact same thing as the block. So again, if you have um, the block thingy already, um, you just need to either duplicate that, or if you have the code like for universal collisions or whatever, then you should be good. All right? And um, <coughs> uh, excuse me. the next thing that we want to do is, uh, well, next thing that I did, actually, is just set my simple movement. So all I did was add event, and I went keyboard left. All right? And um, in that, I just went to the control tab, clicked and drag over a check empty. And for X, I put negative 4. For Y, I kept it 0. And objects, only solid. And relative is checked. All right. And I went to the move tab, and I clicked and drag over a jump to position. And in that, again, I put uh, negative 4 for X and 0 for Y. And relative is checked as well. And then I just right-clicked on the le keyboard left event and hit duplicate event and chose the keyboard right. And in the keyboard right, everything's the same except for get rid of the negative. So it's positive 4 instead of negative 4 and relative and everything is checked. And then it is positive 4 again for instead of the negative 4. All right, and that is the player. Okay, and by the way, if you already have movement and everything for your player, then you should be good as well. All right, and you don't need to do all this. So hit OK. And now on to the button, all right? Let's double click to open that here. And all you have to do for the button is add event and step. And then you want to go to control and execute code. And don't worry, I will have this code in the description box so you guys can just copy and paste it down in here. And uh, hopefully if YouTube lets me, I've had trouble with that in the past for some reason it got deleted or something. But uh, yeah, I'll make sure to put that in the description box. Hopefully it works. So uh, yeah, anyway, um, basically this code is saying that um, if like your player is on top of the button or whatever is like meeting with it, 
than um, the OBJ door thing, um, basically your door object, the variable, which we haven't gone into the door object, um, so you don't really know what this is yet, but this is a variable, and um, we'll see what the variable does inside of our door, all right? And then when, basically, when our player gets off of the uh, button, then the variable is, like, not activated. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, hit OK. And now into the OBJ door object. So in this object, the first thing I did was add event, create, and I double click to open the, um, or actually, I went to control tab and click the um, execute code. So I click and drag that over. Now let's double click to open it up. And in this, I have open equals false, and that's our variable that I was just talking to you about. And gravity, e or yeah, gravity underscore direction equals 270. And that's basically just setting some simple gravity in here. All right, and then I went add event and step. All right. And in that step event, I have more code. So you just want to go to the control tab again and click and drag over the execute code. And in there, I have the uh, what basically what happens if the variable is set off. So if the variable open equals true, then uh, basically it will start to kind of like go up like, um, what's the word that I'm thinking of? Um, I can't think of the word, but basically it's going to keep going up and everything and uh, until it hits something solid. All right. And again, I will have that code in the description box. Okay, and then you want to go add event, collision with your block or your ground object. And you just want to have, um, basically, if you don't have your own, um, your own collision already, then you can just put these two things. Um, it's the same thing as the player object when you collide with the ground. So, you know, direction equals direction, maximum equals 12, solid objects, all that stuff. And vertical speed, you know, just keep everything the same. All right, and that's it for the OG door object. And we already went over the block object. All right, just make sure that it's checked solid. And also, really, get, um, one more time again, uh, make sure that your OBJ door object is also checked solid. All right, or else your player will go right through it. And with that, let's go ahead and uh, run our game. Well, actually, um, just really quick, like I guess I'll tell you guys. Uh, after this, you want to go ahead and create a room if you guys don't know that. <laughs> And you want to just basically place your ground everywhere. And um, make sure that um, when you place your door object somewhere, make sure that there is, like, solid ground above it. So when it goes up, like, it won't keep going up and up and up and up and up out of the room. Unless you, of course, want that to happen. All right. So with that, let's go ahead and run our game. I'm going to go ahead and switch to a different view really quick um, so you guys can uh, see the whole screen instead of, you know, my desktop and then some of the uh, little... A uh, little bit of the game maker screen. So uh, yeah. Anyway, I'll see you guys in just a second here. Hey guys, I'm back. Uh, let's go ahead and minimize this here. All right. So uh, as you can see, we have our little player here. We can move left as well as right. And uh, I didn't uh, put jumping in there because you know I just thought it was wasn't really necessary. So uh, yeah, with this, uh, let's go ahead and go onto our block or onto our uh, little button here. All right, and as you can see, while our player is on our button, our door rises up and hits the wall. So um, basically, uh, you could always rise the wall as well. So maybe all the way up here, so your guy would have to escape. You know, maybe before he gets squashed or something. But uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, then let's go ahead and get off the door here or button. And as you can see, the door just falls right back down. So um, yeah, I really find this uh, kind of door system really handy, and I haven't really found a tutorial on it um, on YouTube or anything. So uh, yeah, I really, really enjoy this system here, and uh, I thought you guys would too. So yeah, anyway, please feel free to rate this video, subscribe to me for, um, you know, just to keep updated on new videos and such. And um, yeah, I guess with that, I will go ahead and um, get off this button here. Oh, I didn't make it. Okay, but anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a good day and enjoy the tutorial, and there will be more on the way. So this has been Rex Furry with another Game Maker tutorial, and I will see you guys later.